and action. Okay. <laughs> and so, <laughs> okay, we're going to redo Reishi so we can drink it and experience it together too. But I feel like there's this is like a whole class in itself. One of these you want to know for a lot of reasons, a lot of relevant reasons, including and beta species and radiation exposure, like all the things that are in the news, right? So this is a good one to redo. So let's just start from the beginning. So one of the biggest problems of ratio that we're gonna see is all the confusion and how to pick it and the types of the ratio we can use and the varieties and the delivery methods, that in itself, we're gonna to have to really sort out because there's a lot of misconfusion out there. Mm -hmm. And a lot of companies are promoting a lot of things that just don't make any sense. So we're gonna kind of sort through all of it. But first, we're talking about reishi mushroom. Um, the Latin name would be Ganoderma. The Chinese name would be Linger, right? Uh, Ling is red, jur uh, relates to like willpower. So there's different types of reishi if we really geek out. The one that we see in America is this nice red reishi mushroom. So in Chinese, this would be called hong jur. Hong means red. Um, okay. We have, we have Ganoderma reishi varieties that grow in Nebraska natively. They're all over the place. So we do have like a native reishi that we can use. I just, I haven't used it much. I don't know how active it is. We also have black reishi, which is less common and used a little bit differently. We'll talk about that. Um, and then we also have exclusively a purple reishi, which is super rare and unusual. So I'll pass this around. What I'm passing around, what do we call this in herbal medicine? Can you clean the purple reishi too? Yeah. Super drops. Um, what do we call, this is called the fruiting body. This is the part that's growing out of the log, right? This is the top of it or like the shell. And this one has the bigger stem on it still. This will be growing out of the tree stump. Okay, so this is this whole thing is called the fruiting body. So this is where we get into a lot of confusion. That's the super. Reishi is a hardwood, right? You are not going to cook with this thing, right? This is not like shiitake or moro mushroom that you could just stir fry. This is a hardwood mushroom. We want to remember that because hardwood mushrooms have really special properties. What do you think those properties are? The main property of hardwood mushrooms is they tend to be more medicinally concentrated. They tend to taste a lot worse meaning more bitter, like, you know, like moral mushrooms taste amazing, shiitake mushrooms and um, porcini mushroom. Oh my gosh, one of my all-time favorite. All those mushrooms taste great or reishi and a lot of the hardwoods are really bitter, but they're also much more medicinally active, okay? Okay, what's this energy of reishi? It has a really unique energy. For all of class, until I mentioned, we're talking about red. Okay. Its energy is cool and it's bitter. Okay. Direction. Direction is uh, upward. Upward, especially from sometimes upward, we said means mind expansive. So reishi is not psychedelic. However, if you take like a lot of it, you're going to kind of feel a little spacey. You have to take like a lot of it, a lot of it. Um, okay. So it's cool, it's bitter. So when we taste, this is why we have to really understand this. When we taste this tea, it's not like super bitter, right? 
Right, like slightly bitter, but when we take the dropper, when we extract it with alcohol and make a tincture, how bitter is it? Yeah, it's lovely. It's, it's lovely. lovely. It's it's bitter, right? I mean, it's a little bitter after. <laughs> it. It really taste it. <laughs> that bitter taste reminds us it goes where? Bitter flavor goes to the heart. So this is a very heart, adrenal, lung, kidney directed. This would be the primary target sites. Um, secondary sites are gonna be the stomach, large intestine. We could also say primary site would be your limb. Okay. Being that reishi is red and it enters the heart, should it surprise us that it's a major cardiovascular herb? Should not, right? It's a major, major cardiovascular herb. Okay. <laughs> How old is the mention of reishi mushroom? Is it one of the most documented ancient herbs on the planet? Yes, because it's mentioned in the Divine Farmer's Almanac, which is one of the first books ever written and recorded by humanity. And it's mentioned as a superior conic in that book. What does that mean? Do you remember when we talked about conic herbs? What in this ancient textbook? This is the first book of Chinese medicine really ever assembled. We really don't know who wrote it. It's just, it's assigned to the divine emperor. Probably written by many people and eventually got into a book format, right? Um, what's the date on that? I think it's, let me do that. Um, date of publication of divine farmers. Oh, well, it's not coming up the right way. It's giving me anybody else remember? No, I think it's about, we're talking about 4,000 years. We're talking really old. So I'll have to get the exact date of it. But it's probably like, the, I believe it's the first book ever published in Chinese medicine, but it lists herbs as superior tonics. What does that mean? An inferior tonic. This is where the idea of a tonic herb first came from. It's very, the basis of Chinese medicine. Everybody's looking for it. Look up <laughs> Chen Nong's. It's in my notes somewhere, but I don't Chen Nong. Ben Kao Jang publication date. Um, What's the name of that book? You just Eastern Han Dynasty, Eastern 25 AD. Divine Farmers Almanac. Uh, it lists here 20, about 2580. Uh, but the book was actually, we know, written by probably many people, many previous generations, but it was first published and eventually put together in this format. We have it. And it's still used today. We still use it today. You can still buy it. You can get translations of it. Um, and it's talking about these tonic herbs, right? So Shen Nong was the divine emperor. They say he, remember, he had an invisible, he had a glass stomach. The idea was that he tasted and tried every herb and understood its medicinal use, including poisons. But he, they say he had a glass stomach because he could see into his stomach and understand what it did. So he listed 
This is a superior tonic. The exact definition of superior tonic from ancient times means an inferior tonic is an herb that treats disease. A superior tonic, so that'd be like isostasis, honeysuckle, things that treat like infections or dandelion that treats like liver disease. Um, but a superior tonic is defined as an herb that prevents disease and slows the aging process. So that's ideally what we want to do, right? We want to prevent the aging process from happening. Okay, or reverse it. And that's what Reishi does. And that's how we've seen it from the very beginning from a Chinese medicine perspective. Okay. Okay. Now there's different types of Reishi, there's different colors, but what we're talking about today is gonna be the red. And the red, if you wanna get a shot of black and red for everybody. Mm -hmm. So we're good there. Okay. Okay, so we're going to start by saying reishi is, first of all, a very hard directed plant. So we know it's good for lowering, lowering cholesterol. But how strong is it? Like in a real clinical setting, what are we talking here? Probably about five to 15 points. Right? Now, Reishi is one of those herbs that, depending on how we take it, is probably going to have a big impact. We're, let's just make this easy. We're always going to be talking about the tea made from the actual dried mushroom, or we're going to be talking about a capsule made from the dried mushroom itself. Okay, that's what we're going to be referencing for all of these uses in this we mentioned otherwise. Okay. How come? This is where, because it gets real confusing. These are the slices. If we buy a reishi, it's best to buy them in slices like this, because it's very hard. We get a better surface area. It's easier to tincture, easier to make a tea, just all around a better extraction. Mm -hmm. I put them recently on down. Chili and some soups. Chili? Yeah. Really? But they don't know person. You just, when you cook the chili, you just put some chili in there and cook it out? Take it out. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And it doesn't okay. change the taste. Okay. I feel like we're going to run into this dosing issue. This is where all the confusion is in America. So let's just talk about how we would take reishi first before we do the medicinal use. Um, Okay, so there's basically a couple different ways we can do reishi in America. We can do the fruiting body or supplements made from the fruiting body. Um, uh, Okay, so we can do spores. Guess what? Do we do spores at all? No, just throw it away. We do not do spores. We don't order spore products because they're basically indigestible, unbreakable, impossible to do anything with them. It's just like some companies promote this and just never use spores. Okay. The spores are designed over millions of years of evolution to not be injured. So they're not going to yield any medicinal properties. So we just don't do them. So we have to know when we order reishi, especially what the heck are we ordering? We also have the fruiting body, which is what we passed around, the actual mushroom itself. These are like the products we're going to be probably emphasizing the most. Okay. We also have in modern times, this is modern, right? We have the mycelium or the roots, right? These are the little rootlets 
that are spreading itself out that would be in the earth or in the log we're digesting. And until modern times, could we even do anything of this at all? No, right? Because you'd have to like, you would be tinturing like a log because you couldn't separate it from the log, right? Just digesting that it, it's everywhere. So until just like the last 10, 15 years, this was like not even on any map or radar. So first we have to understand that like all the previous research and how recently has mostly just done on the fruiting body. Now, a lot of the modern research is now being done on the mycelium. <laughs> So we have to know exactly what we're ordering because this mycelium has one very specific property, right? That's where the immune and cancer benefits we want, the mycelium. So ideally, we like products that are a combination of the mycelium and the fruiting body, right? Because they each have different properties. Similar chemistry, but a little bit different, okay? When we're consuming, oh, this is so, it's like a confusing topic. It's hard to like map it all out for you. Um, when we're talking about cardiovascular and cholesterol issues, we prefer the fruiting body. When we're talking about cancer and immune diseases and autoimmune diseases, we prefer either the fruiting body or the mycelium or a combination of them. When we are talking about all of the nerve, mind, stress, PTSD, emotional effects of the mushroom or like mind altering, we're only, we're only, only, only talking about the fruiting body. That is really important to remember. Because so many people and even herbalists are totally confused by this. Will you repeat that? Yes. Thank you. Okay. Because this is really important to know. Because when you walk into a store, you're going to, you, the labels often are, don't even really tell you. Okay. So the spores, we don't use. Mm -hmm. uh, there's also a product called fermented, blah, 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 blah. We don't do that either. <laughs> Solare makes one of these like fermented this, fermented that. I mean, it might have some really cool property. It just hasn't been researched. It's also never been traditionally used. So it like falls out of our radar. Okay. So the fruiting body is what we're going to use anything for the heart or cholesterol. It's also what we're going to use for protecting your internal organs like during chemotherapy and radiation. The fruiting body has the compounds that like protect your liver from like hepatitis. Okay. And vaccine. And vaccine. Yeah. And protect your kidney and lung tissue. So if we're gonna take ratio for asthma, we definitely wanna have more of a fruiting body product. Yeah. When it comes to cancer, chemotherapy, or when it comes to cancer or immune diseases, autoimmune diseases, <clears throat> either one of these will work. There's a little bit of a difference, but in general, the fruiting body and the mycelium will both work, but the combinations always preferred personally. Okay. Um, also, also disease, it would go back in time if you had vaccine related problems or kidney problems or something would yeah. heal old. Yeah, so situation. it gets a little confusing because the mycelium will heal the immune problems of vaccine damage or side effects of preventing them, but the fruiting body is going to have like the organ protective compounds. Okay. Everybody's still looking a little off guard by this. Okay. All of the nerve calming, depression, anxiety, mind altering, taking it for meditation, all comes from absolutely only the fruiting body. If you try to take a tincture 
of the mycelium, you get zero of those properties. Is the mycelium also cool, bitter, and upward? The mycelium is, is actually just neutral. Okay. So it has total different energy. It doesn't enter your heart. That's a great question. Yeah, it's, it's actually slightly sweet and neutral. Neutral energy. In fact, it can taste like sawdust, actually, when you taste it, right? It doesn't taste very much like reishi. Okay. Okay, everybody's okay with that? Because we may or may not want to tincture this, right? This is the thing that may not want to tincture. So, our favorite way to take <laughs> mushrooms, ideally in a perfect world, would be hot tea is that very practice is not practical for a lot of people so then we're down to capsules are going to be the second best for most applications if we don't want to spend a lot of money on capsules because we might be taking a lot like for cancer or tumor we might be taking like a lot of capsules a day like six to nine to twelve uh, in that place, we might want to do a powdered concentrate. Okay. 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 Would the tea help topically or like a radiation burn? The tea would still help topically for radiation, but yeah, because it's. Most of the compounds, the majority of all the compounds that we get from reishi are mostly all water soluble, except a lot of the nerve calming compounds, kind of like a little bit of alcohol. That's why we say if you're going to take it just for anxiety or stress, a tincture is sometimes better, but usually tinctures are the least preferred way to think mushrooms. So it's one of the rare examples where tea and capsules are actually better than a tincture. That makes sense? The nice thing about mushrooms is their chemistry absolutely is not affected by heat at all. It's not affected by cold, right? Because they've evolved over millions of years to live in these extreme climates and just not die and thrive on anything, right? So the cool thing about this is we could just have, we could cook reishi mushroom tea for days and it's just going to get better. It's going to get more and more concentrated. Okay. For other herbs, we would just cook them to death, right? We would destroy all the properties eventually. Okay. <laughs> so everybody okay? So bar for making tinctures and that you usually can't when we buy mycelium it's usually just like a powder that's just kind of how it shows up so if we're going to make tinctures i mean usually we just use the fruiting body anyway like if you bought this is where it gets even more confusing if you bought a tincture from like paul stamets post defense company which is like an amazing company it's actually just a tincture of this, of the powder. It's not actually like a tincture like we normally make. So it's it's not ideal. I don't like his tincture for that reason. If, I, if people want to use his products, it's better, it's cheaper to do the powders, right? How much do we pay to capsulate something? Exactly 300% markup by any company. So if you're going to take mushroom capsules versus powder, the way better buy to do the powder. Can't you just capsulate yourself? You capsulate mm -hmm. yourself. Yep. It's kind of a hassle, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. So everybody is cool with this, right? We're not going to eat reishi very much. We can kind of cook with them. A lot of herbalists have made like chocolate recipes with them because it's kind of bitter. The probably the main what's the main way that reishi shows up in the world today? The coffee mushroom 
lens, right? There's all these different companies, usually like multi-level type companies or like Facebook companies, where it's like half coffee and like half mushrooms or reishi. You can tell by the taste of reishi, it's kind of coffee-like and it's like a little bit bitter, but pleasant, like more pleasant than coffee. So a lot of coffee substitutes will also have reishi in them. So that's how reishi shows up a lot, like mud water and all those things that have mushrooms in them all have like reishi with other mushrooms together. Um, I mean, one thing to their credit is it works good as a powder. I mean, it works, works well that way. Everybody's okay with this. This is like super confusing. So if you read this label, you would think, oh yeah, I'm getting my reishi mushroom, right? There's the red mushroom. But you're not. If you read the label that says Ganoderma lucidum mycelium. They're not getting the fruiting body in that. They're getting no fruiting body. Okay. Right. Okay. But I love, but we use this product for cancer and all that all the time, right? And autoimmune conditions. So for most things with the immune system, the mycelium alone is okay, but it's still not like a you know. Okay. He has a product that has both. Yes. No, just this. Okay. Yeah. 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 It even says mushroom mycelium powder. I don't know what he's doing with all the other parts of the mushroom, but yeah. I'll pass this around that you can like show the labels so people can interpret. See, you wouldn't know that, right? Because you see the red reishi, and this is like, I mean, this is a good company. It's what we use. But um, again, you read the label, and even the front says. Mycelium. Okay. Okay. It's a really passionate area of mine because a lot of people don't understand it. And there's a lot of debate. There's a lot of research. I mean, some research has an only been done on mycelium. Some's only been done on recruiting bias. So, like, herbal medicine researchers get really like heated about all this. But in a nutshell, that's where the, the totality of the information lands right now. Okay. Okay. So we're good. Okay. If you wanted to make a tincture of the fruiting body of reishi for cancer or immune support, is it still going to have an effect? Yeah. Yes. It's just not the ideal way of doing it. Or something like that. Okay. How, how long do those dried slices last? I like to tincture things because then I don't have to worry about they they to get pretty more. much last forever. So as long as the tincture lives. Yeah. So if you're tincturing it, would you need to like decoct it first? And would how would you if need to I leave mean, it longer than two? I was going to make a tincture reishi. Mm -hmm. I would decoct it first. Yeah. And then I would tincture it. And would then you you're getting it? the best of everything. Would you leave it longer than two weeks? Would you need to? No, we wouldn't need to. Just two weeks. Yeah. Okay. okay. So the question out there for people in Zoom land is you had decocted tinctures, I think, last week with Shay. This is an ideal way that we decoct things. A lot of your tonic herbs and adaptogen herbs and mushrooms are all better as a decocted tincture because then we get around it all. So is it all mushrooms you prefer not as a tincture or just the reishi mushrooms are least effective as a tincture? Is that all? Pretty much all mushrooms. This is true. Yeah. Because of their chemistry. Yeah. Yeah. They have these polysaccharide compounds, these long, like sugary starch-like compounds that affect the immune system. And they're just very water soluble. This is how they're designed. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's go through the different areas. So we have for the reishi, it's very good for the heart, okay? So again, to review, if we're going to take reishi for your heart, so this would be a lot of heart conditions. This is good for arrhythmias because reishi actually, like it physically strengthens the heart. So it's good for damage to the heart, like you've had a heart attack and you're recovering. It's good for arrhythmias, like uh, the mechanical 
and irregularities and the heartbeat the pulse okay it is good for anybody who has had damage to their heart from a virus this is one of our main main things like covid myocarditis yes people who have long haul covid have myocarditis or damage to their heart from COVID or any viral infection, ratio is one of the absolute most specific things we can ever do for that. I've seen it work again and again and again. Because mm -hmm. after you've had myocarditis, guess what? You still feel really crappy <laughs> and your heart can still be have a degree of myocarditis for months or even years sometimes. Okay. Okay. Remember that. Put that in the back of your mind. Whenever a virus attacks the heart, we use reishi. And we also, ideally, we combine that with the stragglers. And you can do that while you have the virus, not just after. A stragglers we would do, as long as we're through like the feverish stage. The reishi, though. The reishi, you can, yeah. What's cool about mushrooms and the immune system, we can do them no matter what. Acute infections, chronic infections, mushrooms are always the answer. They're always a safe bet. That's what's so exciting about them. Okay. We have to have this because of their nature. We don't have to worry about it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So we're also going to use it for high cholesterol. Again, if we're going to use it for any of these heart things, we're going to probably use the fruiting bodies or cholesterol. Um, reishi also lowers blood pressure a little bit, about five, 10 points over a long period of time. Okay. I don't think reishi affects the valves of the heart, but it affects about everything else. Okay. Mm -hmm. We also use reishi for people that have a weak heart. In Chinese medicine, we've known for a long time that reishi physically strengthens the heart, and also we're going to see emotionally strengthens the heart for people that have had trauma. Okay. Okay. So we have the heart aspect. If we have to take when chemo, certain types of chemotherapy can damage the heart, right? This is called the uh, kind of acceptable damage. A lot of breast, some breast cancer mm -hmm. medications do this. Um, some other types of chemotherapies do this. So we take reishi as a preventative if they're on a chemotherapy that is known to possibly damage the heart. Or even if someone comes to us and they've had damage, even if it was five, 10 years ago, we'd still do reishi to help recoup some of that. And I've seen people recoup it because their ejection fraction and all that improves and restores once they start taking it. Okay. 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 Next one, topical, really good topic. What are you going to do if you're exposed to radiation? From nuclear radiation, sunburn radiation, um, maybe natural radiation because you work in like a, a mine where they mine it. So like in Asia, reishi mushroom is used on people that have to work when they're exposed to radioactive natural materials, like uranium mines and things like this. Um, or maybe a mine they're working in has some degree of radioactivity, right? Um, so if we are exposed to radio, if there is a nuclear war or a nuclear power plant meltdown, right? Not uncommon, remember Fort Calhoun, Got like a little bit hot about 10 years ago, right? It didn't like melt down, but it got hot, right? There was some things going on there. There were things released into the air that were above normal. They tried to downplay it, but the truth is it just did something started happening. Right? Um, 
that radioactivity can be minimized by doing reishi preventatively. So we have reishi in our kits, our emergency kits at home for a lot of reasons. One reason is just like if the craft does hit the fan, this is like one thing we're going to take if we're exposed to radiation, right? The crazy thing about radiation, like it, you know, like if an area is exposed to it, unless it's completely removed, that area will usually be radioactive like thousands of years. It's not going away. So if I mean, I'm not trying to scare, but I was saying just one of the best things we can do to feel prepared is that we're going to do issue mushroom for a really long period of time if we ever did get exposed to anything. Right? Okay. Um, probably one reason why the government and the DOD has a lot of mushroom capsules sitting somewhere, I don't know where, but somewhere. Story. Um, okay, so if we have a radiation exposure, if we are going to be going undergoing chemotherapy or radiation treatments, reishi is one of the best herbs for a variety of things. Number one, okay, let's move into the immune system. Okay, so we have a patient who's let's just specifically say. You have cancer and you're going to get chemotherapy or radiation. Okay. So if you're going to get radiation anywhere in your body, reishi is one of the top things to help reduce the side effects and protect what's there, right? We talked about this, remember? In Chinese, this is called. Fuxen, right? To uphold the righteous, to protect the chief. So reishi just happens to have this really very unique property amongst plants or mushrooms that it has compounds that protect your liver from damage, your brain cells, your lung cells, your digestive tract, and your kidney cells. So it basically kind of protects your entire body. So that what that means is if we're getting radiation on our brain, our breasts, our chest, our lungs, our stomach, our kidney, our liver, our pancreas, we're using reishi mushroom to help protect and minimize the damage for radiation, okay? What if we see patients that are having lingering effects from radiation treatment, even if it was, again, many years ago. What are we gonna do as part of a protocol? Give them reishi. For radiation protection, we love, ideally we would have some fruiting body with the mycelium, but either one is acceptable, but the fruiting body is better for the protective effects. Because remember that bitter taste that we taste, those are a lot of the liver compounds that protect our liver. Okay. Okay. We start to see right away why this was called the dancing mushroom in ancient times, because when you dance when you found it, because you had like a real remedy, right? Okay. Okay. What if you're getting you have cancer and you're undergoing chemotherapy, <clears throat> okay? So chemotherapy, one thing we're concerned about, again, is this food sen idea, meaning we're going to protect your body, your cells, your organs as much as possible to minimize the damage to our body and cells and organs, which will allow our body to function better and will allow us to better fight off cancer, right? So if we have cancer and we're going undergoing treatments, you bet your bottom dollar we're gonna give people reishi or some type of reishi blend to help reduce the effects of chemotherapy treatments, okay? 
This would be any chemotherapy across the board, some more than others, but any chemotherapy. So for chemotherapy, we can do either the fruiting body or the mycelium. Okay. All right. Gonna get since we're in the advanced year now, we're getting into the second year. If people are on the new immune biological therapy for cancer treatment, not the old fashioned chemo, but like immune therapy, like Keytruda or something like that, that's one of the newer targeted immune therapies. We don't know what mushrooms do with that. So we just, sometimes we just hold off on them. There's no evidence that they do anything negative. So I mean, I have a fair amount of patients that are combining them, but honestly, we just don't have enough data yet to know. But it's extremely unlikely they would have any kind of negative effect. But so usually we'll we'll avoid it while they're getting an immune therapy, just to be safe. Okay. Okay. Let's say you have a cancer or a tumor. Reishi has been shown to have really broad spectrum anti-cancer, anti-tumor effects. Especially for liver cancer, kidney cancer, all the lymphomas and leukemias, like blood cancers. Um, other types of cancers is going to be helpful for, did I say lung also, lung cancer, breast cancer? Um, it's going to be helpful for any type of cancer, but especially those ones, we're going to do reishi just as a way to help fight off cancer or help reduce the growth or maybe slow the of like tumor or knock down some cancer cells, right? For that, we're going to do either the fruiting body or the mycelium in a capsule or a powder or a pea. Okay. Okay. So, no matter what type of cancer you have, we're going to consider. Reishi mushroom, right? Okay. What if you have a stage four cancer where there's just, you know, there's no more medical options or maybe the doctors are just doing chemotherapy because there's no other option, even though the oncologist is saying it's not very likely to help, but it's just like a last resort. At that point, we're going to give people a lot of like mushroom, especially ratio, because it's going to strengthen their body. It's going to help give a little bit of like core immunity. It's it's going to still help with the cancer itself directly. So when people are in stage four and basically kind of have no hope, this is only something we're going to do to at the very least just support their body, right? And we always have, we can always, we can always have hope for a miracle that it's gonna maybe help the tumor cancer in some way, right? Okay. 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 What about you have liver disease? Reishi is well researched for hepatitis. Hepatitis A, B, and C, all types of hepatitis, drug induced hepatitis. So, anytime your liver enzymes are elevated, very helpful for it. You have viral induced hepatitis. Remember the case I had this last year of the mono induced severe hepatitis with the young college, um, high school girl? They were getting concerned she was going to have permanent liver damage. And Reishi was, well, I just gave her Reishi capsules, one of the main things that really resolved it. Um, so, anytime we have a virus that damages our liver or there's any damage to our liver, alcohol damage to our liver, drug side effects damage to our liver, 
Um, again, radioactivity, chemotherapy, toxins from our everyday life. For that, we prefer the fruiting body for damage to the liver or to protect the liver. What's really great about reishi is that if somebody has like severe liver disease or hepatitis, um, we get we don't do a lot of liver cleansing because it's just unsure of how they might tolerate that, right? Reishi does not cleanse the liver at all. It actually is what we call uh, hepato-restorative. It just helps your liver cells regenerate and turn over quick. So it has like a protective effect and a restorative effect. So we can use reishi if people do have hepatitis. If you've ever had hepatitis from food poisoning or hepatitis viral or vaccine damage, or you've had hepatitis from a drug side effect or virus, we can still give people reishi long after that time. Okay. Okay. That's pretty exciting. There's so we often can't give cleansing herbs, so we're really limited to this. We can just give people reishi. A lot of not a lot of other mushrooms do that to the liver. I mean, reishi is pretty unique here. Okay. Okay. What about viral infections? Going back to the immune system. Reishi has been really researched for most all chronic viruses, like Epstein-Barr virus, right? We've had mono. And that Epstein-Barr virus is still causing you a lot of problems. One of the most researched and one of the most um, successful things I've ever seen for Epstein-Barr virus. Okay. CMV, cytomegalovirus, you have chronic cytomegalovirus, herpes virus, um, AIDS, HIV, what's another chronic virus we would have? Long haul COVID, you know, possibly, um, it's a little different, but any kind of chronic virus, we're going to use ratio for. And remember how we talked about when they give antiviral herbs, what often happens? What kind of reaction happens? You get worse. That's what I get We get, we call it a Herxheimer reaction, right? Remember that term? We hurts when we get a Herxheimer reaction. Right? Meaning a lot of virus dies off, they unravel, they release a lot of things our body doesn't like. It makes us feel cold, flu-like, achy, chills, sweats, digestive stuff, detox stuff, right? What's really cool about the mushrooms, we all we have to all remember this with gold stars, right? Is that for chronic viruses, for whatever bizarre reason of mushroom chemistry, mushrooms <laughs> rarely, if ever, cause Herxheimer's reactions. HPV would be another like chronic virus. It's very common. It can cause a lot of problems, right? So when we give people things like echinacea or honeysuckle or istasis or thyme or oregano for a virus that's chronic, they can often have a lot of die-off type symptoms. For whatever bizarre reason of chemistry and amazingness, Reishi mushroom does not seem to hardly ever, ever, ever do that. So what that means is we can give it to people who are very sensitive, who are very reactive. And reishi is a superior tonic, meaning it can be taken indefinitely. You can take it for the rest of your life. You can take it long-term. There's no safety precautions. It's very gentle. It's designed to be a long-term use. Okay. We can also take it for acute viruses like colds, flus, COVID, and quite a bit of COVID research of ratio mushroom. Um, we can do it for all kinds of acute viruses. 
And we don't have to worry about if it's on the initial stage, right? Like we sometimes have to worry about like with the draglets and things. We can just give it freely. Again, reishi is a really good for viral infections in people who have a very weak immune system that we're concerned that this virus is going to knock them down for a really long time. You know what I mean? Like someone has had chronic weak immunity where they're always sick and they can't break the cycle. Now they have a virus again. So reishi is really, 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 really good when people are getting chronic repeated infections again. Yeah. So like those people who seem to have a cold all the winter long. Yeah. Or people who catch a serious cold or COVID or influenza or RSV, like yeah, multiple times a year, chronic sinus infections. And this is how we break the cycle. Okay. So we can give it during acute things with things like honeysuckle and echinacea and elderflower, or we can we can take it by itself, right? It just has a lot of really cool properties. We can also give it double star, it's like such an important herb to cover again, right? Double, triple, quadruple star. We can give this for people who are just not getting over a viral infection. They're just, it's lingering, it's stuck. It's, they're not getting over it. Or maybe they test negative like with COVID, but people still have all the COVID symptoms and it's, three weeks later, four weeks later. Now we just call it long haul COVID, right? Um, but any, any virus can do that where people have a flu, a science infection, and they still feel like crap for days after mm -hmm. they've taken medications or anything or weeks after. We give mushrooms like reishi to help people get out of that right away. Okay, that's one of the best strategies you can ever do. I can't tell you how many people are so thankful for having had something like reishi as part of their protocol because it just can really help. What well, and reishi is totally safe for infants, adults, children, sensitive people, reactive people, allergy prone people. It's just an amazing plant that way too. Never seen anybody be allergic to it ever. Even people that are allergic to other mushrooms. Even people that are allergic to other mushrooms. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. What if you have a chronic fungal infection or this Candida aureans thing going around, right? Well, one of the best ways to <laughs> fight off chronic fungal infections and candida infections is reishi mushroom. Right. Remember how we talked about in older herbal books, like in the 70s, there was this idea that it still shows up sometimes that don't do mushrooms, don't eat mushrooms, don't consume them because they have a lot of candida and yeast and fungus. Well, a lot of food ones do, but here we're talking about the hardwood mushroom, right? They are resistant to fungus and bacteria and everything, right? Right? Remember? That's pretty hard, right? Hard wood. These are resistant to fungus, yeast, bacteria, mold. They have the chemistry, they've secreted it, they're doing it. So we don't have to worry about that. If some people go, what's that? pretty cool oh that's all yeah if some people go to like eat like mushrooms from the grocery store that are like moldy and who knows how they got there that can trigger people a lot but here we're talking about hardwood mushrooms okay so for people who have mold allergies mold sensitivities candida chronic candida chronic yeast chronic candida sensitivity Activities. This is your this is your thing. One of the best ways, one of the few ways we have for people who have like chronic mold or mold sensitivity or like mold fungal infections is 
this, it doesn't treat toenail infection, but like systemically it's amazing for any kind of fungus. Okay. Have you come across any good ways to give kids mushrooms? Like, like you can use powder? the powders. Okay. You can use the powder. Their taste look will dissolve yeah. and stuff like smoothies or yogurt or yeah. Yeah, the tincture is not so much in the capsules. There's some companies that make a lot of gummy, but I mean, when you do a gummy, it's 600% markup, mm -hmm. right? That's a capsule crazy. is 300% of gummy is 600%. So yeah, companies mm -hmm. love to sell them because it's huge product. Mm -hmm. And you're not getting very much of gummy, but I mean, you can you could make gummies, jello, you could do all kinds of stuff, but I think you can do those type of powders and stuff. Yeah, from a smoothie, right? Yeah, you can totally do that. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have fungus, we have mold, yeast. Okay, immune system number two. Mushrooms, like especially reishi, have a ton of anti allergy, anti inflammatory compounds. So we can do reishi for acute allergies, like you have hay fever reactions to allergies from the environment or chemical reactions in the environment like you're a person who will react to like perfumes like i've seen so many people who are like so reactive to like airborne everything where they're like practically living in a bubble uh, this as much as anything has helped people get out of that you just do it very long term you just don't stop taking it for like a year but for people who are super reactive to airborne fragrances, scents, aromas, pollens, allergies, you have to do it long term, but it's really, really helpful for it. It just helps the immune system. Remember, it's an adaptogen, so it helps the immune system adapt to these exposures. Okay. Isn't that exciting? That's awesome. Pretty cool. Okay. <laughs> so, so reishi for acute allergy symptoms is probably not as strong as eyebright or horseradish or quercetin or a lot of things we talked about, but it's helpful. But for chronic allergies, where you're always having allergies or you're constantly getting re-triggered, and sometimes you don't even know why, chronic allergies. This is it. Guess what? Here's the perfect situation for ratio. Right? You're the person, you've been to every doctor, you've been to every allergist, you've been to every immunologist. Nobody knows why in the hell you're getting sick constantly. Is it allergies? Is it your immune system? Do you have food allergies, environmental? Yeah. Nobody can really unravel it. And guess what? You just give those people ratio long term, and it just eventually they get over. That is so, I can't tell you how many people have showed up at the clinic, that same thing, like every week I see it and people are suffering and they're upset and they've been everywhere and tried everything and, and allergy injections and allergy medication, like steroids and all kinds of other supplements, just long-term reishi. Would you suggest just the reishi or is the stamina seven an equally good? The, I think for allergies, like just the ratio. Yeah. Well, you're gonna get you're gonna get other good benefits from that. So for allergies, either one will work: the mycelium or the fruiting body. But if we want the fruiting body, we can't get stamens. Right. Mm -hmm. You should call him up and ask him what he's doing. He's just known for being really, I mean, they have a lot of research. I mean, maybe over time we'll see that this is the best for all of that. But for some things, yeah, like the nerves and that, it's, it's just different. So, yeah. So chronic long-term allergies, you have exposure, right? Chemical sensitivities. This is long term, though, okay? Okay. Okay. What about next one? Lungs. You have damage to your lungs, whether it's from bronchitis, pneumonia, COVID, 
long-term damage to your lungs, reishi, one of the best things we can do. For that, we're going to combine it with cordyceps often. And for that, we can do rooting body or mycelium, either one, or a combination. Okay. Reishi, specifically research, really, really helpful for chronic asthma because it's anti-allergy and anti-inflammatory. So it's very good for people who have chronic asthma. It is not strong enough for like an acute asthma attack, like lobelia or something like that, or medication, but for chronic asthma, it's really, really helpful for it. More the fruiting body mycelium or combo? Uh, either one, fruiting body or mycelium for asthma. There's research on both. And so often we'll combine it with cordyceps for that. Okay. Okay, the next one is kidneys. You have kidney damage, right? Your kidney <coughs> lab values like your BUN and your creatinine are elevated because you have some kind of kidney either stress or disease or drug side effect. There's this weird thing that's happened in medicine the last five years where like anybody over the age of 60, you just, it's normal to have kidney disease and kidney failure, stage one, two, and it's just accepted that you're just going to progress through the stages of kidney disease. I don't know why or when this happened. It's really weird. So, so the aging of the kidneys and the people who are classified as just kidney disease stage one or two from the aging process, reishi and we usually would combine with cordyceps can actually help to reverse those labs and help the kidney regain function. I've seen people totally regain their function, right? Or for people that just have kidney disease itself, you know, Stage one, two, three, or four, even more advanced, we can do reishi. When's the only time we wouldn't give someone with kidney disease a mushroom? Transplant. If someone's had a transplant, we don't know how the mushrooms interact with the transplant rejection drugs. So it's the only time we wouldn't give somebody with kidney problems reishi or cordyceps. So but I've seen so many people that were relatively healthy just have their kidney function improve by taking ratio or cortisol. You've talked a few times about how tinctures and herbs don't always react the same when we have transplanted organs. Um, is that the same for like a blood transfusion? Like you had to, you're in a car accident, they gave you blood when you're in the ER, things like that. Does that mean for a time our bodies won't be reacting correctly to things or? Is that different? That's different, but the body does uh, get a little mm -hmm. wonky, like after a blood transfusion, like your more like your spleen and your heart have to kind of adjust and adapt. But it's different than like a yeah. organ transplant. Is it like short term? Like yeah, it's it might react weird for like two weeks or something, and then you're gonna be yeah, okay. It's more short term. Okay, yeah. I just meant to ask that a few weeks ago. Thank mm -hmm. you. And usually it's so necessary that it's like a great thing, you know. Yeah, I really mean, if they're giving you blood, you probably yeah. want it. Yeah. I assume. Mm -hmm. Vampires don't know they take it all the time. Yeah. Okay, so you have kidney disease. Guess what else? You want to know one of the coolest things about reishi? Yes. Related to the kidneys. Uh, for this, by the way, what I'm about to say, only applies to the fruiting body. Well, there's some pretty interesting heavy metal chelating compounds in the fruiting body. So for people who have heavy metal toxicity, heavy metal exposure, lead poisoning, cadmium, all the whole host of heavy metals, and they have damage to your liver or your brain or your kidney from it. So we do, we also take this long-term to chelate heavy metals out of our body. And guess what? When we give like people like that cilantro, they can really react and go detox wild. Very 
tissue mushroom does not do that. It's just very slow, very steady, very methodical. It's a great way to get heavy metals out of your body. It's a great way to reverse some of the damage from heavy metals. All right? Remember, Omaha, everybody thinks, oh, yeah, I'm not affected by heavy metals. Well, Omaha is the EPA super fun site. It's one of the highest less toxicity in children in the nation because of the ARSCO plant based thing. Second common cause of lead poisoning in Omaha children is from spices and crappy sources that are contaminated heavy metal. That was just published a week or two ago. Oops. It's really common with refugees who are buying their store, their spices from like, you know, like ethnic grocery stores that might have imported spices from other countries that might not have some of our quality standards. And then even good spices in America would still have heavy metals if they don't test for it. Even some organic, right? The organic rice is like terribly polluted with lead, right? That's why we no longer recommend rice porridge to children anymore because the American Academy of Pediatrics said rice is so polluted with heavy metals, it's not safe to get into things so far. Mm -hmm. You know that? That's why we don't do that anymore. Yeah. Remember how we always used to give babies like this rice yes. porridge? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. They don't do it anymore because of that reason, the American yes. Academy of Pediatrics yeah. even recognize that our rice is so polluted. Even a lot of organic rice has heavy yeah. metal. Again, yes. you don't want to know how bad <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you think you're doing something healthy because you're not eating gluten, you're yeah, doing... yeah, mm. and dark chocolate, too. Yeah, that's where I get on a soapbox. Like, hey, okay, <laughs> so many food companies are polluted with heavy metals. But if I made a bottle of like reishi and even tested like borderline for heavy metals, they would shut, they would shut the company down for life. Mm -hmm. But like when a huge company where you're eating pounds of rice a day does it, it's like this, I don't know what they do. They just put a warning label out there on their website. Or... It's such a double standard. That's really sad. Okay, we're on a roll here. Okay. Um, people who have had... Okay, ready? Another really unique application of reishi because it's an adaptogen. It helps our body acclimate to altitude, changes in altitude. So together with American ginseng, we combine American ginseng and reishi when people are going to go to altitude and sometimes a little ginkgo to help oxygenate the blood. But those three is a magic Trinity to help people with altitude changes. It was, it was, what was the second one? American ginseng. American ginseng, reishi, and go. Mm -hmm. Or you've had damage from being at altitude or so. But we have to do this preventatively. You start it like about a week before. It's usually not quick enough working to do it like as you're really sick. Okay. So would you take it a week before, during, and on the way back? A week before, during, and on your way back. That's where a lot of people screw up. Okay. Yeah, I've had a lot of people that got altitude sickness coming from like Colorado, Montana, down to Nebraska's low level. Right, you can get problems adjusting both <laughs> sides of the direction, right? Okay. Okay. Uh, we also do reishi for the brain to protect the brain, uh, especially like when people are getting radiation treatments to the brain or have had some kind of damage to the brain. It doesn't work like wood bethany for concussions, but this would be more for things like MS or neurological diseases where the brain is actually being like kind of like slowly destroyed, Alzheimer's memory things it helps protect what's there okay all right it's just the beginning thyroid remember uh 
Reishi mushroom is one of the best herbs for, um, let's go back to immune system for a second. Um, reishi mushroom is our standard of care for any autoimmune condition across the board. And uh, even if it may not be specifically known to have some effect on like, let's say, ALS or scleroderma, we just, we, a great way to help people reduce their autoimmune where it helps downregulate your body attacking itself across the board and use reishi. Okay, so any autoimmune condition we use reishi for. One of the most common ones we use it for would be with Hashimoto's, thyroiditis, right? Where people, their immune system goes a little haywire and attacks their thyroid. They get nodules and then they have the autoimmune thyroid disease. For that, we do reishi mushroom. You know, 90, 95% of the time, it will just drop all the autoimmune thyroid indicators in the labs. The antibodies will just drop. Your body stops like attacking itself. Use both? For that, I prefer to use the fruiting body, but um, both will work. Mycelium or the fruiting body for that. Please. I mean, almost never known it not to work. Uh, we also use it for thyroid cancer. Guess what? We've taken radioactive iodide to treat your thyroid tumor. And we can take reishi before and after to help the body acclimate to that exposure and toxicity. Isn't that exciting? Do you have a dose for like the autoimmune? Capsule, like okay, so let's talk about dose in general. So, in general, when we're talking about anything almost across the board with capsules, it's going to be two capsules, uh, two to three times a day. So, about six capsules a day for most things. This would be for chronic allergies, you know, all the things we've really talked about. If that's like a pretty good two capsules two times a day would be like a low clinical dose. Two capsules three times a day would be a higher clinical dose. Okay. If you're going to do the, the Stamens powders, one half of a teaspoon is about four capsules. So we do it once or twice a day. Okay. Tea, if we're going to make an old school tea, it's going to be a cup two to three times a day. Okay. A tincture, which we would do for some things, we're going to dose at 30 to 60 drops two to three times a day. Those are going to be your pretty good low to moderate clinical dose. Can we try to how would you mix uh, ginkgo, American ginseng, and reishi? That would be the percentages. Well, usually with reishi, we'd probably be doing capsules. We'd probably just, you know, it's probably easiest to just take them all separately, the ginkgo and reishi and American ginseng. Uh, plus American ginseng and a pincher you have to get real pricey really quick. So, I mean, for that one, it's probably just easiest to do it as a separate capsule. That's, does Stanley make teas? I can't remember. They do, yeah. They have like, but it's just the powder that I passed around, like in a tea bag with some herbs added to it. Okay. I still you, like the powder though. Do you have a company that you like for mushroom teas? There's not a lot where you can buy just like plain, I mean, like in a tea bag. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of companies that make just like a plain reishi. So you usually just have to buy the like the dried slice of gotcha. and brew it that way. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. 
And when we make a mushroom tea, it's different than herbs. We can do the crock pot method, remember? Mm -hmm. How do we do the crock pot method? We have to educate patients to do this all the time. Mm -hmm. So remember the old, I'm referring to the old fashioned crock pot. We all grew up with. What was that? A quart size? What is that called? Two quarts? You know, the ones about this tall and circular. What, what size is that? Two quarts? Three or four. Two quarts? I think it's bigger than that. I think it's three or four. Yeah, it's four quarts. Nineteen eighties cross yeah. orange one. Yeah. You need an orange one, please. With mushrooms on it. Brown, orange. <laughs> things, man. So the bigger, newer ones are five yeah. quarts. So let's just go with that. Like the modern ones that are more egg shaped. Yes. Those are uh, five quarts. Okay. Okay. Mm -hmm. So with that, you're gonna do. Um, you're going to do about three heaping cups of sliced mushrooms. Or it's easiest to take a handful and do like three huge handfuls. Well, it's pretty strong. You're talking like a lot of mushroom. But what you do is you cook that overnight in your pot pot. You let it kind of simmer down about a fourth of the way. And then you just you take like a couple of cups out as you drink it and you just add like a little bit of water each time till it just stays at about a half. You just leave that thing on all week because you keep it. It's gonna get like thicker and thicker and thicker. So you do that for like a whole week. You drink a cup, you just kind of put like a cup or a little bit more back just so it stays about half constantly. And that's just going to keep yielding different and different chemistry as it goes through the process. You don't cook it for more than about five to seven days, though. And like for people that have like cancer and they're just, you know, they're just busy with a lot of stuff. And you don't have to keep making stuff twice a day or every day. You can just have this crock pot on all the time. Just keep it on low once it cooks. Or Instapot, right? Either yeah. one. Okay. Okay. So, nervous system. Uh, we talked about this before, so we won't cover it so much. Reishi, the only, for the nervous system, only the fruiting body is all we use. The fruiting body has a lot of nervine, nerve calming properties, heart calming properties, mind calming properties, meditation enhancing properties. We use it to induce dreaming and lucid dreaming. Like you'll dream a lot often when you take reishi. Um, we also use it for yeah training the meditation mind. It helps your mind feel very kind of zen, calm, and focused. So reishi is both a nervine and an adaptogen. Yeah, it's to me, it's not a true adaptogen, just from the sense of it's not really energizing, but it does help the body adapt. But it doesn't fit like my criteria of like having an energizing effect. But it is an adaptogen in books, so it is. Yeah. But because it doesn't help your body adapt to all these stresses and that. Yeah. Um, so we also use it for PTSD. Reishi is one of the best herbs when people have disassociated from their body because of a trauma or shock or abuse. When you need to like reconnect the mind or soul and the body, this is what we do. Reishi. And we can do this long term. Okay. Very, very good for like <laughs> night terrors and nightmares, and especially like with PTSD and vets. This is a great vet Is it better than the pig for? This is one of, if, if you know somebody who was like in Vietnam or both war, 
because we use we use reishi for golf course syndrome. We use reishi for people that were exposed to like a lot of vaccines, like vets have been like a dramatic amount at once, right? We use it for Gulf War syndrome. We use it for Agent Orange exposure. All these things that a lot, of, especially like in Vietnam and some of those wars, people are exposed to some really bad chemicals. Reishi is one of the, the best things to kind of help with that. So, and reishi doesn't interact with anything. The only thing reishi really we we don't combine it with. Um, organ transplant medication, <laughs> and we don't combine it with blood thinners. It does make your blood um, less like clumpy and thick. There's a lot of more uses for it. I mean, the main use in Chinese medicine just flat out is that they say it's the mushroom of immortality to extend life, reverse the aging process, but it also has, it's seen as like, remember when we talked about the Shen, Remember, reishi is the only herb in Chinese understanding that affects your shen directly. It directly interfaces and strengthens your shen, whatever you want to call that, like your higher mind, your soul, your spirit, spirit. It's a very cool plant. There's not a lot of plants that do that. Would it also be useful um, if somebody's had their um, health whatever removal? Not not so specific for gallbladder removal. That's where like our bitters would be better, like our torts or traditional digestive bitters and that. Mm -hmm. Reishi mixes really well with chocolate or cacao to really open the heart. It mixes great with hawthorn for heart problems. It mixes most beautifully with the stragglers for weak immune system and chronic allergies. You know, um, for cancer, it mixes great with other mushrooms, especially chaga. I mean, just all kinds of ways we can with reishi. So what do you get for the fruiting body? Then, like, if you're just getting, giving that? Yeah. Well, oftentimes we'll do the tincture or I'll just, uh, we're actually just restocking and figuring that out again. But um, probably going to land on nature's way because it's like just the, just the dried up herb. Is it in a lot of your <clears throat> um, your traditional Chinese medicine formulas? Not commonly because in ancient times it was so rare. Mm -hmm. What's cool about the mushrooms is it, like in ancient times, this would have only been available to emperors and very it's very expensive it's only when it started to be grown in greenhouses like about 25 years ago that it even became available so most all the research on it's within like the last 25 30 years because i just i mean you couldn't really get it very much it wasn't very common so what about um like anti is it anti inflammatory it's extremely anti inflammatory like yeah, and there's a lot of hints that it also like, like with radiation, that it actually can prevent our DNA from being damaged by like aging, radiation exposure, drug side effects. Like that's probably makes sense since it's always been used for like longevity and anti-aging. So I have this purple reishi is like a really rare reishi that's considered like the most nerve calming and meditative. The problem with purple reishi is you can't get it. There's only one company in America that makes it. You can go on like the internet and buy it, but who knows if it's actually reishi or purple or what the heck it's from? Because you're gonna have to order it from China. It doesn't grow here. So there's only one company, and this is this Dragon Herbs purple reishi. It's wild purple reishi, but they do like a lot of quality testing on it. But this one's really fun if you just want to take reishi for meditation or to like enhance your mind or to connect with nature. I'll let you try it. It's very, I feel like just go like, like right here, this right away. And it goes to your heart and then it goes whoop. And it's bitter. I mean, you can taste the bitterness of it. You should, you shall buy some of that online because I don't know. Who knows how long it goes? It's dragon one. Dragon herbs. 
why only for Bori should we drop? They're kind of pricey, but it's fun right. to use. Okay. I feel like we did ratio service. I think we really did it up. Um, One time in, in another class, you said that you um, switch off the mushrooms every six to eight weeks. Somebody had cancer. Sometimes, like with cancer, what we'll do is we will rotate the mushroom or mushroom combination like every about six weeks. But if you're taking reishi for some of the things we talked about, you don't have to do. You don't have to take a break from it at all. It's very mild, very gentle. For some reason, I've written down that it's a bitter cooling and grounding. Mm -hmm. Is it both grounding and uplifting? It's very uplifting from the sense of like mind expansive, but it, it's its overall effect. But you will feel calm and grounded on it, but you're also going to feel this spaciness. So the direction is still up. Direction is still up. But it is also grounding. Yeah. Okay. So you're in your heart. You're like yeah. into your heart space and in your mind. Mm -hmm. It's like a really good aftertaste. Very mm -hmm. chocolate like. Mm -hmm. oh, right. That's why yeah. Reishi yeah. really yeah. combines well with chocolate, too, right? Did, 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 did you say that was a combination for Reishi and chocolate for <laughs> opening the heart? Yeah. Opening the heart. Yeah. For that, you could make a food recipe, you know, or you could do different things. Stamets used to have the mushroom chocolates. That those are really that was actually really cool. Yeah. She had chocolate and mushrooms and things. So yeah. and that was good. <laughs> chocolate bars. Yeah. So there's a oh. uh, I'll read you this. This is from one of this is from a really high level Chinese teacher. Um on the use of red reishi. Um, red reishi is used a lot in lineage systems uh, how would i describe that just more of like a psychological use of reishi is for when people are coming from a place of misery and they've lost all faith and they need to like reignite their faith and this journey to overcome their misery or trauma i mean that's that's kind of like one way we would use it for kind of ptsd that would seem good like just people kind of coming out of covid it is yeah yeah it's uh, reishi is also very good for oc ocd add adhd and obsessive compulsive disorder too because in chinese medicine ocd comes from the heart oh, wow. it's all 100 percent the heart always ADD mostly too, all from the heart. Okay. About oh, hypothyroid, hypothyroidism. Hypothyroidism, reishi um, no. is like supportive, but it won't necessarily make the thyroid hormones balance. But remember, reishi is an adrenal tonic. It's just very mild. I don't like to necessarily talk about it that way because. People don't get a lot of energy from it. It's more like calming and just sort of that makes sense. Mm -hmm. okay. Mm -hmm. okay. But if we're going to take it for its nerve calming effects, again, that we just would probably tincture the fruiting body or just take the fruiting body capsules. We got to get that. I don't think you would be ordered to the fruiting body. Nature's way or something. Okay. Okay, any other questions on reishi? That's a lot. You feel the purple one? The purple one's a little noticeable. They want a double dose? They want a double dose? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody wants? I mean, man, you can take a whole dropper, but I mean, it really uh, I usually just take a couple of drops. Or just, yeah. Okay, what's the website that um, is Michael here? The website is Dragon Dragon Herbs. Dragon Herbs. 
they've got some really unique stuff. Yeah. Um, they're a good company to call. They actually have licensed acupuncturists that answer their phones. Yeah, you know, like questions or stuff about certain products. That's okay. kind of cool. Yeah. Okay. I feel like we covered reishi pretty well. I feel like there's some body part we're missing. Oh, reishi, there's some research that it's a little bit beneficial for type 2 diabetes. Not drastically, but it probably helps them some resistance in some way. Um, it's also been shown to be helpful topically for treating frostbite. I don't know who discovered that and how or where or why. Okay. Is it good for the skin otherwise? It's good for, uh, we you would use it for the skin topically, at least in Asia, it's thought of having like an anti-aging effect on wrinkles and that, like as a tea or as a, it's in like a lot of lotions and things. Um, but the main way we would use it for skin stuff is like viral skin disorders, like molluscum contagion or chicken pox, we would do it internally. Mm -hmm. And then also we take it internally for like autoimmune skin problems like psoriasis and eczema and those things. But like skin, where you're getting allergies to environmental things and having really bad skin reactions, mm -hmm. you would use it for it. But you would just put them on a blue swab then. For that, we would do it more internally mm -hmm. than topically. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, we like cobwebs right now. That's good stuff. <laughs> yeah, the purple stuff is good. I mean, you can take it up if you want to try another shot of the regular ratio. Um, you know, more. Where does it grow in Nebraska? You it grows all over the woods in Nebraska. I just haven't yes. used the Nebraska. Variety much. So they also want a little more ratio. I think that's your variety. Which might be like my thing. Mm -hmm. Remember, this is why we have to be really good herbalists because you can take a lot of stamens or other products that are the mycelium, and you're never going to get that like ooh, that really meditative. It really calms your mind. It's a very meditative. Enhancing herb. So what? Because I taste salmon. So I'm not good at them. I mean, when am I wasting my time? Should I be? No, I mean it's great for your immune system. I think it's great for like virus and immune function and cancer and allergies. But if you want more of that calming effect, probably alternate and switch to a little breathing body for a while. And then the summertime too. Like winter, yeah. summer. Gets fired up. Okay, so um, let's. Are we feel good with reishi. Okay, okay. I feel like we could do it up a little bit more, but I'm gonna press. Okay, all right. Let's okay. try to let's finish the recording here. I feel like Stacy. <laughs>